Admittedly, I got a bit ahead of myself when I said that Studio Trigger starting a Patreon would be the first step to animator liberation. I was perhaps a bit too eager to see Trigger become the face of change in industry, and as a result, I have suffered the embarrassing fate of making Crunchyroll fans seem remotely intelligent. Even those who believe in quote unquote free markets have done a better job critiquing the company and changing the material conditions of animators. But an error only becomes a mistake when you refuse to correct it. So I will demonstrate the research I have done since then and hopefully come out with even more solid arguments for why Crunchyroll is garbaggio. I'm going to discuss what art is and how I believe we should relate to it and those who create it. I wish to focus the conversation on the goal of ending exploitation. It's a goal I think is not only possible, but necessary. And it's something I think ordinary people can help with, should the political will to do so be created. Many of the material conditions I will be suggesting will also apply to things beyond the art world, as demonstrated by Paul Cockshot in his lectures. However, something Cockshot didn't touch on in depth with his video specifically about ending exploitation is the right to copy, aka copyright abolition, which I now will. Art is war. It's not just Cockshot who sleeps on talking about copyright abolition. No one is having this conversation. Art is near and dear to me, and likely you as well. As such, the political dimensions cannot be ignored, and certainly not its liberation. However, first we must ask what is art before we can discuss the philosophy of it being free. In their book, The Monomic Imagination, Remembering as Creative Practice, Emily Kitely and Michael Pickering speak about reconciling memory and imagination. They speak about how imagination requires memory as a resource, and how memories require imagination to exist within our heads. Remembering then becomes a creative process, and it could be said that fundamentally art is the process of giving you a memory of something that never happened to you. To paraphrase Samuel R. Delany, what does this mean in practice? It means that, like consciousness, art is an event that happens as a result of certain sensory perceptions and responses. Art is not something that physically exists in the world. However, it is not mere communication, despite how book titles like The Art of Speaking may unintentionally mislead you. All communication is collaborative, but the difference between art and regular communications is this. Art is an argument. Just like you can use the scientific method and results from science in your argument, so can you use such things in art. But persuasion is far removed from pure logic and the scientific method. Art has an unquantifiable aspect to it, because it is a conversation, and conversations don't always have objective measurable ends. Humans don't always argue or debate to see the completion of a task. This is why you see movements and sentiments focus around the idea of art for art's sake, which see art as a deeply personal conversation between the artists and themselves. This is not to say that art will not be utilized as a political force. Indeed, many genius thinkers like Walter Benjamin and Ernest Fisher argue that it always does. I agree with thinkers, and as such I'm going to present a quick summation of their arguments to you. After which I will move on to why this means that we should abolish copyright. For Walter Benjamin, modernity was about mass. Mass democracy, mass media, mass transport, mass warfare, mass culture. As such, mass reproduction of works changed what art was. In the beginning, art was for ritual. It was akin to a magic spell. From the cave paintings which depicted animals that tribes subsisted on, to exalting local rulers, any work of art had a certain aura around it because it existed in a certain time and place, under unique circumstances. But now, millions of copies of any form of art can be made that are all for the most part exactly the same. Art has become less dependent on ritual and more dependent on politics. No longer is it about the singular figure at the center, but the whole of the world which can witness it. This is not to say that there aren't those who wish to reject this, but looking at it as an overall trend, it is irreversible. Art which is made to appeal to masses is here to stay, and there is no going back. As such, for the people who rule society, art becomes even more of a tool for promoting themselves and their ideas, not just in their local area, but across the world. Both Benjamin and Ernest Fisher rejected such unjustified hierarchies bolstered by propaganda and thought thusly, in a decaying society, art if it is truthful, must also reflect decay. And unless it wants to break faith with its social function, art must show the world as changeable and help to change it. Thus we can see the fundamental problem with copyright. It is political censorship, guided by and for the interests of the capitalist class. And this is where we can begin to look at examples in the realm of anime and manga. Copyright is the idea that for a certain period of time, all artistic works would fall under the complete control of the quote unquote people who made them. I put people in quotes because although it can apply to actual flesh and blood individuals, more often than not, the people who own the intellectual property rights, or IPs, 
are corporations, who can fire the people who have actually made art products whenever they want. Even economists from Washington University in St. Louis admit that the term intellectual property is merely a phrase created to establish monopolies and restrict free trade. But more than the economic argument, we must again look at the moral implications of such a policy. Censorship then is a denial of an argument, a restriction on free speech. Now I'm not one to say speech should absolutely never be restricted, but it should never be restricted unnecessarily or to serve the capitalist interest. YouTube is the perfect example of the latter, as covered excellently by The Closer Look. My only problem is his solution doesn't go far enough, as it doesn't address the core issue of censorship at its root. With copyright, the accusing corporation has the most power, because even if you sue them and win, they still have discouraged millions, and you have lost millions fighting them through legal means. Conservatives who believe that there's always a bigger fish, and that we should just either accept our place or create our own product, not only ignore the immorality of claiming ideas in the philosophical sense, but fail to understand how these practices hurt us all on a material basis as well. We end up with the worst products and restricted access to what by all rights should be an inexhaustible resource like the air we breathe. The anime Terraformers is a good example of both explicit censorship and covert censorship strengthened by copyright. When the manga was adapted to anime, the first season blacked out the grotesque violence which is a staple of the series. Most find things like this egregious enough, but what's much worse in my opinion is how in season 2 they completely changed the art style and thus the tone of the series. Along with changes in the music and other minor alterations, it could be said that the product that resulted from Gonzo Studios' work is a complete departure of what drew people to the original manga in the first place. You will find plenty of horror stories like this if you look. I just spoke about this example because I have personal knowledge of it and was affected by it. And to me, it symbolizes perfectly why anyone should have a shot of adapting any piece of art, as being stuck with only one version of the story in the animated medium is a disgrace. A less extreme example is what Tohei has done to the One Piece anime, or just to their adaptations in general. Just because it's less immediately offensive, it doesn't mean censorship isn't still occurring. It is common knowledge that the One Piece anime can be terribly paced. Why can't we let other people have a shot at tackling this giant of a series? Critics might counter that this would result in everything becoming derivative. However, this both completely ignores that everything is a remix, and the fact that copyright laws haven't existed for most of human history, and people still made great unique art. I'd rather be efficient instead of trying and failing to teach a lesson that doesn't need to be learned. The New Face of Copyright Abolition With the recent passing of Article 13 and Article 11 as of writing this, the question of intellectual property and what should be done about it is only going to become more relevant. As it relates to my favorite mediums, I'm forced to bear witness as record-breaking profits are made for stakeholders thanks to Western companies like Crunchyroll, while the availability of jobs and healthy work environments decrease. There are guardians of the system like Mother's Basement, liberal detractors with liberal solutions like Digibro, and an honorable vanguard filled with people like Armita Ventura of Shingetsu News Agency, who wrote an article on the need to support unions, cooperatives, and pro-labor parties in the country of Japan and outside of it. For me, however, it's not enough to solely poison the giant with strategic purposes, or kill it over time with a thousand cuts of better conditions in each studio one by one. Where it's possible, I'd like my strikes to be at the legs, to knock this disease monster to its knees. And we have the chance at such a strike. Pushing for votes against copyright, a referendum against intellectual property around the world to deliver such a blow, should the will be manifested as by all rights it should. Let's look at some of the immediate benefits of such an action taking place. For one, that's one less area of useless competitive thinking in the world that leads to bigotry. Art will once again become an even more communal and collaborative experience. It will allow for the chance of quality adaptations of works, or even different types of adaptations which will appeal to different audiences. Artists will actually make more money as they can focus on selling whatever their labor produces, and they gain more call status based on their skill and style. A true meritocracy. Preemptive prevention of the fiasco that would come when designer babies become a common, i.e. no companies owning a genetic code to your children like their Masato beans. A reduction in brain damage caused by copyright existing. YouTube being able to focus on actually fixing the site. The possibilities are endless, and there are clearly more winners than losers. It is my sincere hope that the new face of copyright abolition can in fact be a cute anime girl.